Ah, a quality view that I never thought I'd see again. I was at Great Yarmouth and had the privilege of getting a little go unofficially. Although not the subject of this video, it is a picture that's on my laptop at the moment, which ties me into where I've been. Computers as they are, crash every now and again, and that's what happened to mine. Well, sort of. It crashed after I dropped it, and it's been away at the repairers, and I've just got it back. I put a hold on all of the stuff that... I put a stop to all of the work that I was doing on my workbench, which meant I had to go and do other things. And that means ballasting and scenery. Two jobs I don't really like, probably because I'm not that good at it. I like to describe my scenery skills as, at worst, amateurish, at best, piss poor. The upside is, though, I've again now got somewhere permanent to showcase all my models. So I'm not going to show you how to do scenery. There's plenty of YouTube channels that do that sort of thing far better than I can. But over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to plug as many products scenic wise as I possibly can, all of which will be linked in the description below, some of which will be common and you'll all know about them. Others, not so much. I'll start off with Pico back scenes. I know there's others on the market, but I like these. And I'll only briefly touch on these because I've got a video of these that I want to do in the future. From the background to the foreground, I want to now do ballast. And for new ballast, I like Javis. It says extra fine on the label, but I think it's a little bit coarse. I also like the way that it glues down. For older, browner ballast, I'm stuck with Woodland Scenics at the moment. It's okay, it's nice and fine, but it's a synthetic product, which means it doesn't really react very well with PVA glue. Another not so well known manufacturer of uh, ballast for model railways is Natural Scenics. And I've been using their stuff for a little while now, and I really quite like it. Especially the cinder dust, which I've been using to put between the tracks in my yards. I, like many of you probably, after I've done a little bit of ballasting, hoover up the excess and then put that into a mixture jar to use in places where it doesn't really matter what colour it is. Moving on to glue, I use PVA. I buy it in bulk because it's cheaper that way. And then I decant it into individual bottles for various different uses. Watered down for ballasting and neat for general purpose use. Sticking, pun intended, with the recycling theme, I've also got a bottle of water with a little bit of washing up liquid in it that helps to break the surface tension when you're gluing stuff down. You'll have seen many other YouTube scenic experts doing it, very much the same thing. Switching to some track details, see what I did there? I've got some Pico dummy point motors, which are ideal for any modern railway with powered points. These are what I would term as the first of the breed. If you want a more up-to-date version, they are there are others on offer, and these ones here are from Rusty Rails, also link in the description. I've done a fair bit of landscaping just recently as well, trying to create some scenic relief. Using, of all things, an old school technique using chicken wire, or a derivative of, but mostly the more modern way of doing it using polystyrene. But not the expensive stuff that you buy in the shop. I'm talking about the cheap stuff that I'm almost certain most of you will have stashed away in your loft that came in the box surrounding your TV stereo video thing stored up there in the vain hope that one day when you sell it on you'll repackage it but in reality in about 10 years time you'll just have a spring clean chuck it in the tip 
Trying out some new ideas and ditching the old school paper mache theory, I've started using the plaster cloth method. There's several different manufacturers of this, and the only difference that I can see is the price. Ranging from cheap, reasonable, and extortionate. As with anything these days, shopping around to find a bargain is a good idea. I bought some paint a number of years ago, and the tin has rusted from the inside. Doesn't matter, the paint still works. And that creates the base for all of my green scenery. I mix some of that with a little bit of PVA and water. The theory is that paint adds to the stickiness of the glue, and then you add your green foliage. And then if any of it rubs off, you have a brown earth-like underneath doesn't, that masks all of the whiteness of the plaster. Moving on to grass and bushes and foliage, all of the green stuff, I use all of them. Pico, Hornby, Backman, Woodland Scenics, Javis. And when I've finished using them in any individual part of any scenic scene, I hoover them all up and then put them into my mixed grass jar, which is ideal for railway embankments, rough ground, which is what you saw me just do. Recently, I discovered these rather nifty little fence units from Javis, and I think they make an excellent transition from the foreground of the layout to the background and the back scene. There's several different styles, types, and what's even better is that they're relatively cheap. With a little bit of imagination, they can really blend the background into the foreground. Scenery on a whole is a seemingly never-ending addition of odd little bits and pieces to really bring the scene to life. Not so long ago, I set myself on another voyage of discovery and taught myself how to do chain link security fencing. My camera's having a bit of a job focusing on it, but that's exactly what I'll be doing in an upcoming video. Another topic in a different video will be relay boxes from various different manufacturers, and also we'll discuss where they go and what they do. Probably not the most inspiring of topics, but I find it a little bit interesting, so I'm going to do it. I mentioned a moment ago that scenery is a never-ending project. It's also something I don't like doing that much. Whilst my laptop has been away at the Menders, I've managed to do quite a lot. I've even managed to get a little bit of a scenic space to showcase all the models, which leaves me with a couple of options. Either drop my laptop again to carry on with the scenery, or crack on with the 31 project. Either way, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.